dust particles floating in the air. They're all around us, everywhere we go. Hundreds of thousands of particles, most so small they're invisible, only fractions of a single micron in size. Very small, considering a single strand of human hair is 100 microns thick. In our everyday lives, these particles don't create much of a problem. Most eventually fall and settle harmlessly on some nearby surface. When the dust builds up to a noticeable extent, we simply wipe off the surface, recirculating most of the particles back into the air. In the home, much of it is found in fibrous materials like carpet, upholstered furniture, and drapes. An industry standard for measuring airborne particles is to count how many pass through a cubic foot of airspace in one minute. The average home has more than 300,000 particles per cubic foot. In schools, there are about 200,000 particles. In hospitals, the number of particles is reduced to 100,000. Even in operating rooms, there are about 1,000 particles. The NASA clean room we will be studying has a maximum of only 10 particles per cubic foot per minute. The sun, the heart of our solar system. It holds the tantalizing secrets of our very existence. It is the search for these secrets that prompts NASA to launch the Genesis mission in the year 2001. The spacecraft will travel one and a half million kilometers towards the sun and expose its specialized collectors to the solar wind for two years before returning to Earth. The Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas is the NASA focal point for the Genesis mission contamination control. This is where a team of scientists will assemble the collector as well as receive the captured solar samples, hoping for clues to the origin of our solar system. A key element in the solar collector is an array of hexagon-shaped wafers. When oriented towards the sun in space, these wafers capture solar molecules deep within them. It is of critical importance that the solar collector be assembled in an exceptionally clean environment. For this reason, NASA designed a clean room specifically for the Genesis mission. The amount of solar wind that gets embedded into the wafers out in space is very, very small. You need to minimize the amount of contamination on the, on the surface so that you can tell the difference between the dirt and the embedded sample. So we built a Class 10 clean room at NASA so that we can minimize that contamination while we're handling the wafers. How do clean rooms prevent contamination? through a very strict set of specifications. Architecturally, the design is simple, with no ledges, nooks, or other obstructions where dust can accumulate. All surfaces are hard, impermeable materials to prevent contaminants from adhering and for easy maintenance. To keep the air free of particles, the clean room maintains a thoroughly filtered, recirculating airflow. Basically, you have a room inside of a room with the empty space below the floor, along all four walls and the ceiling. This way you can get air coming down through the ceiling, through the room, out the bottom, and it recirculates back up the walls over and over and over. The high velocity of air through the clean room causes the airflow to be directed straight down, continually sweeping any airborne particles out of the room. This unidirectional airflow, called laminar flow, acts to continually cleanse the space. After entering the ceiling space, the air gets blown down into the clean room through a ceiling-wide system of ULPA filters. ULPA, or ultra-low penetrating air filters, are extremely restrictive, releasing only one particle for every 10 million that it captures. The entire raised floor system of the clean room consists of perforated metal panels. Once air exits through the floor, it gets recirculated upwards through the wall space. The Genesis Mission Clean Room is categorized as Class 10. Only 10 particles, one micron in size, are permitted in one cubic foot of airspace every minute. This Class 10 Clean Room 
is NASA's cleanest. The adjacent viewing corridor is rated slightly higher as class 100. What are all these particles doing in the air around us and where do they come from? Mostly from the human body. Our skin is made up of many layers of thin tissue. We are continuously shedding the top layer as new layers are regenerated. Our bodies create a whole new layer every few days. As the top layer dries out, it turns into loosely attached flakes which eventually break up into tiny pieces and enter the atmosphere. Clothing does little to contain the particles. The open weave structure of natural fibers allows free passage. Even greater amounts escape through seams, holes, and other openings. The human body transmits a varying number of particles depending on the amount of activity. With little or no movement, the body sheds about 100,000 particles per minute. In more active roles, the body releases up to 1 million particles. And in full exercise, 10 million. Special suits are needed for working in the clean room. The material is composed of a continuous synthetic filament that generates no particles and allows little transmission through it. Clean room suits are the frontline defense against contamination. We know we are the number one source of contamination, and if we don't protect the clean environment against ourselves, the result could be failure. Surgical garments are worn beneath the suit. Care must be taken to avoid letting the coveralls come in contact with the floor while getting dressed. Snaps around the ends of the pant legs ensure a tight fit. Rubber-soled boots extend high up onto the leg and fit snugly around the foot. A double pair of surgical gloves lap tightly over the end of the sleeves. One of the largest sources of contamination comes simply from breathing. Contaminant-laden water vapor gets expelled from the body by the human respiratory system. This vapor evaporates in the air, leaving behind a significant amount of contaminants. In the clean room environment, specially designed helmets are used to prevent this source of contamination. The bottom flap covers the gap between the top of the coveralls and the neck. A tube from the helmet attaches to a HEPA filter pack worn on the belt. The pack provides airflow through the helmet and releases filtered exhaust back into the clean room. Even with all the protection these suits offer, some particles still escape. The scientists take this into consideration when organizing the work process. It would have been a lot easier to install the wafers into the array frames if the frames were lying in the horizontal position. But if we did that, the installers would have to lean over the wafers and would potentially drop contamination directly onto the wafers. So instead, we're going to hold the array frames vertical and install the wafers that way. And then the room airflow will blow all contamination down onto the floor instead of onto the wafers. The scientists take great care to avoid physical contact with any part of the solar collector, since this could cause contamination. Special tools have been designed so that system components can be assembled without the necessity of direct bodily contact. Before assembly, the individual parts of the solar collector, with the exception of the pristine wafers themselves, need to be scrubbed clean to remove contaminants. The Genesis clean room contains a separate wash area for this purpose. Using ultra-purified hot water, all components are thoroughly washed with simple household liquid detergent. Once a component gets wet, it is important to keep it totally submerged until it can be thoroughly dried. The washed components, as well as the clean room itself, need to be tested for contamination. And there are highly sophisticated instruments that perform this function. One of our analytical instruments is a liquid particle counter. You take an item that you just cleaned, you rinse it off, and capture the rinse water. You then send that rinse water through a laser and count the number of particles in it. Particles are contamination. There is also an air particle counter that counts the number of particles in a sample of the airspace. The instrument is so sensitive that it will immediately detect particles generated by simply snapping your fingers. If these instruments find a particle count in excess of the controlling specifications, all work immediately stops 
and measures are taken to improve conditions. Clean Room Technology Representing the extraordinary measures that guard against contamination which threatens the success of space exploration. And the Genesis Mission Representing an extraordinary step in NASA's continuing efforts to solve the riddle of our universe.